here I've got my Raspberry Pi 4B, and in this video I'm going to be trying to make it as fast as I possibly can using methods such as a SSD, a fast operating system, overclocking, and much more. You'll probably want to watch all the way through so you can find out how to do this yourself if you ever get a Raspberry Pi or any server or computer because it should be relevant to any sort of situation using any device or the server. So let's get started. So this Raspberry Pi is a Raspberry Pi 4B and more specifically the 8GB version. So it's the fastest Raspberry Pi you can currently get if you don't include the Raspberry Pi 400 which is more of a regular computer than an actual Raspberry Pi because it has a very high form factor and is of course built into the keyboard. So then I'm going to be testing the speeds of the Raspberry Pi by using a Python benchmark script that calculates the single threaded performance of the Raspberry Pi by seeing how quickly it can calculate 10,000 digits of Pi. This is the one I used in my previous video where I turned a laptop into a Linux server and compared it to Raspberry Pi, which you should go watch after this video because the results were actually very interesting. The benchmark is also very portable and easy to move between devices because it's written in Python, which is installed in all versions of Raspberry Pi OS by default. So that's what I'm going to be using for this video. So first of all, I measured the Raspberry Pi on the base speed, and the way the test works is that a lower time means the device is faster and it's calculated it faster. So the time I'm using the base Raspberry Pi with no modifications is 108 seconds in which it hits 58 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot, so it's also going to be starting to thermal throttle at that temperature, which affects the performance greatly. I then installed this heatsink case onto the Raspberry Pi. This case comes with fans attached, so it actually has active cooling, which is the best form of cooling for the Raspberry Pi. So this should negate the issue with the thermal throttling, and it can also allow us to use overclocking later on the Raspberry Pi, which can greatly increase the speed. Because on the newest Raspberry Pi 4B, you can't use overclocking without an active cooling because it gets so hot and it would damage the CPU or be too hot to actually run, which would actually make it slower. When I tested the speed of the Raspberry Pi using the heatsink, the time is 105 seconds, which is only 3 seconds quicker than the regular time. And the reason it's not much quicker is probably because the temperature only got to 58 degrees and the Raspberry Pi only really starts thermal throttling at 80 degrees. So the real speed increase will be when we add the overclocking, which should make a big difference hopefully. So I then overclocked the Raspberry Pi and I used the maximum possible stable overclocking settings that I could use. Because anything higher would make the Raspberry Pi unstable and make it crash. So when I enabled these settings, it only decreased the time to 101.7 seconds, which is less than 4 seconds faster than with only with a heatsink. Which doesn't make too much sense because I set the clock speed to over 4 times the default, so it should be a lot faster, but for some reason it's not actually different at all, which doesn't make too much sense. It could be because of the desktop environment using up all the resources and using the, new, the now increased resources for itself, but I'm not too sure. But later I'll try it without the desktop environment so you'll be able to see what the results are like then. So next, I set up an external SSD with the Raspberry Pi. This should allow for much faster boot speeds and faster read and write speeds for files, which should be very helpful for most applications such as a web server or anything that needs to access files regularly. Although it may not make much of a difference in a single pair performance, because it should only really change just the operating system desktop environment, which is very clear when you see the result of the benchmark, which is 112 seconds, which is actually slower than just the base Raspberry Pi. But this might be because it was still a bit hot from the previous test and the heat was affecting performance. And in reality, it won't actually affect the single threaded performance at all, just adding an SSD, but it'll increase the general speeds of the Raspberry Pi. But obviously the main benefit of the SSD is going to be the increased read and write speed. So when you use the built-in microSD card speed test on the Raspberry Pi, the main tests are the sequential write speed, the random write speed, and the random read speed. So the microSD card, the results are 18,881 kilobytes per second, 834, and 2,320. So with the SSD, the results are 300,623. 14,346 and 10,821, which is a massive difference. So when you put this onto a graph, you can see it's much higher, especially because the random write speed is over 1,620% higher, which is a massive difference in performance and should make a very big difference for most devices and applications. The SSD is also the cheapest external SSD that I could possibly find on Amazon, and it's already over 1,600% faster, so a good quality SSD would be much faster. But obviously data on the graphs doesn't actually show the actual speed when you're using these in a real application. So to simulate a more real world example of the speed between the microSD card and SSD, I set up a basic Python web server using Flask. I just set up the simplest web server that I could, which allowed me to compare the speeds of the SSD and the microSD card when actually used in a real application. It's also a particularly good web server, and it's not very fast as well. 
Obviously, the results not be perfect because it's going to be a bit of overhead because I'm using Python, which is a very slow language compared to other languages such as C++ or Go, or basically literally any other language because Python is super slow. Once I had the web server ready, I transferred it onto the Raspberry Pi and then ran it. I then used the built-in Chrome Lighthouse tool to test the speed of the website. And when using the microSD card, I got a performance of 97. And at a time of 1.6 for all the categories except for largest contentful page, which was 2.3. And I then transferred the server with all the same files onto the SSD and then ran it. The performance was 98, which was in increase. And every single time was 0 0.2 seconds faster which is quite a decent optimization for a web server because every single optimization you can make for web server is important and 0.2 seconds is quite a decent one. I also tried to make a Python benchmark which would tell how fast it took to load the website but it didn't work because I think it was only measuring the speed of the HTTP request which wouldn't be affected too much by the file read speed and it kept varying and didn't give any coherent results. So when I then set it up using the overclocking and the SSD without the desktop environment which was causing difference in the result the time went down to 95.9 seconds, which is a pretty decent decrease from 108 seconds. It's not the fastest, but it's still pretty good. But the real decrease comes from when we changed the operating system from the regular Raspberry Pi OS to a more lightweight operating system. And in this case, I'm going to be using Diet Pi. I was originally also going to try and use Alpine Linux, but I just could not get it to work. I spent ages trying to get it to work. I set it up completely from scratch, as the tutorial says on their official wiki, and it still didn't work. After the entire day trying to set it up and having it not work, I just gave up and decided to only use Diet Pi. Diet Pi is a very lightweight and fast operating system, and it should hopefully give us a massive performance boost compared to Raspberry Pi OS. So let's install that now. Diet Pi is actually really easy to install. It's actually easier to install than a regular Raspberry Pi OS. Because all you need to do is install the ISO from the website and then flash it with Bellina Etcher or another similar software onto a microSD card. And then plug the microSD card into the Raspberry Pi. And it will only ask you one setting during the setup, which is if you want to change the default password, which is also optional. So it's very easy to set up and it's a lot faster when you do set it up. And when I tested the base speed of the Raspberry Pi using Diet Pi, the result was 102 seconds, which is 6 seconds faster just by default, which is a lot quicker. I then tested Diet Pi using the maximum possible stable overclocking settings, and somehow the result was 69.7 seconds. There's a massive speed increase compared to the base Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS, as it took almost 55% longer to calculate on the regular Raspberry Pi without any of these modifications. But if you include that the desktop environment, which put the time to 95 seconds, it was almost 37.5% slower, which is still quite a big difference just by switching out the operating system. I don't actually know why it was so much faster using overclocking with Diet Pi compared to Raspberry Pi OS, because I still don't know that much about Linux. So if you know why it's a lot faster, please leave a comment telling me how, because that would be much appreciated. So obviously in conclusion, you can see that the best way to easily increase the speed of Raspberry Pi completely for free is by installing Diet Pi. It makes quite a decent different performance, and you can probably overclock it a very small bit if you have just heat sinks. Next you might want to watch this video where I turn the laptop into a really fast Linux server. But anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.